Hallo jelle, dit is Elisma van Roy en Iso en vandag gaan ek met jelle bykie praat oor gebed. The power of prayer and what, what, what different types of prayers you get. Now we all know how to pray, we all do it every day, right? So I thought I'd, I'd do like a little, like a little intense study on different types of prayers and how, to, how and what a prayer is and why do we have to pray and work stories in the Bible and all that type of goodies. Good. So a, a prayer is like a form of worship. It's a form of communicating with God. It's a form of con, a conversation with God. Um, and it's an invitation to allow God into your situation. It's an invitation to allow God into your you know, your circumstance at that moment, right? And it's an invitation where, you know, um, when you drive, you you just talk to God, say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day. Ach, thank you, Lord, for protection. And then before you go into a meeting, you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Did you go with me into this meeting? Um, small things like that. That is why the scripture says we have to make life uh, a, a prayer, a life of prayer. Okay, our whole life has to be a life of prayer. Okay, where we communicate with God the whole time, where He's part of our lives the whole time, right? Van dan gaan ons die beste besluiten maak, dan gaan ons die beste keuzes maak, en ons gaan die beste richting en beweeg. As ons God deel maak van alles in ons leven. Nou, voordat ons enig iets doen, moet ons altijd dit een gebed saak maak. Ons moet altyd bid daarvoor, ons moet altyd vir die Heere vraag, Heere, is dit die rechte ding wat ek vandag gaan doen? Nee. Ok, so, there must be an open communication between you and, and our Heavenly Father. We need to ask Him questions, like I just said, and we need to share with Him our thoughts and our hearts. Ok, we have to open up our hearts to Him. And just say, Lord, but this is how I'm feeling. Even though he really knows, he really knows what is actually going on in your life. We still need to tell it to him. We still need to give it to him. Now, John Piper said a very clever thing. He said, a prayer is intentionally conveying a message to God. Intentionally conveying a message to God. That is when you say, Lord, and you know, you're speaking to God, okay? And you know, okay, I want to convey this message across now. Because there's so many prayers. There's, there's so many prayers we can pray to God. There's so many messages we can send to God. So many messages. So that is nogal mooi gesê, intentionally conveying a message to God. Want jy Praat mos nou, jy weet mos nou, ek gaan nou praat met die Heere. So intentionally, dit is a, ek wil nou met God praat. Ek wil om nou hierdie vraag vraag. Ek wil om nou prijs gee. Ek wil, ek wil, ek wil. So intentionally, begin jy met God praat. In Romans 8 verse 26, it says, At times we don't know how to pray. Or know the best things for our lives, nee? or to ask for. The Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. Isn't that beautiful? When we do not have words, when we don't know what to ask for, when we don't know how to ask for it, when we don't know our future, but we need to ask God for guidance. Or sometimes when you get this uneasy feeling in your heart, we need to let the Holy Spirit carry that message to God. Because I believe it's it's most it's, it's, it's special if you pray in tongues. It's your special language that you have with the Lord. And it's your special time with him, that you have with Him. Now, I experienced praying in tongues as a special thing between you and God. I mean, if you, 
if someone asks for prayer and you start praying in tongues to them, they, they won't know what you're praying to them. Okay, so there's areas where you need to pray in tongues. When you want the Spirit, the Holy Spirit to come, you all can pray in tongues because that will call the Holy Spirit, right? But if someone asks for a specific prayer, it's, it's, it's hard if you just start speaking in tongues. It's okay if that is what you feel comfortable. It's okay. But that person then won't have that face that you that that person is going to carry that prayer through. Because we have to have faith in order for that prayer to go through. Especially if you pray for someone, if you pray for healing, if you pray for you know another person, they, the person that you are praying for, must have faith. In that healing prayer that you prayed over their lives okay so and I also find if I pray in tongues and it's almost like I'm, I'm more humble because then I know exactly I'm praying directly into God's hand I'm praying directly into God's hand I'm not playing praying out of selfishness okay Romans 8 27 says God the searcher of our heart knows fully our longings. God knows your longings. He knows what you need. He knows what you want. He knows how you're feeling. But He still wants you to pray. He still wants you to communicate with Him. Right? Yet, He also understands the desires of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us his holy ones in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. Now we don't know it's God's plan in our life. We don't know it's our destiny. But if we pray in tongues, if we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit just connects with God and then your life will happen. And then you, you, you will pray for you in order for your life to go into God's plan. Isn't that beautiful? Because we don't know. We don't know what our destiny is. You might know what your blueprint is. You might know what your calling is in life. But you don't know what God's plan is for tomorrow. In order for you to go further with your calling. Yes, you have a calling of a business. Business, you know. But you don't know where God wants to use your calling on that business. Or where God wants to use your calling on that leadership. We don't know. But we just follow God. We just follow God and we follow the Holy Spirit. We act in the Holy Spirit. We let the Holy Spirit take over so that we can walk with the Holy Spirit. Our prayers hold so much power if we include the Holy Spirit. So, there are different types of prayers. Now, I'm going to do a few this week and then i'm going to continue next week because there's just so much and that's why i'm doing this i don't i don't i don't just want to touch on praise i will deepen it and gaan so that ons dit meer kan verstaan want ons weet dat gebed is maar ons moet die kracht daarvan en ons moet heel tyd bewus gemaakt word daarvan bewus gemaakt word daarvan now we have a prayer where we, where we spend a long time with God. Now that is when you also do the praying in tongues or you just, you have that quiet prayer. You know when you just have that quiet prayer? That is also a prayer when you spend a long time with God. Now in Luke 5 verse 16, Jesus often went away from them, his disciples, into the wilderness to pray. Even Jesus went away to have a long time to pray to God. Okay, then we all know Daniel was a prayer warrior. He made times to pray to God. Okay, then we pray in unity. We pray together. So when we get together and we have like a group prayer, right? In Matthew 18 verse 20, it says, Where two or three gather in my name, I am there among them. Okay, so that is when we pray together. Then we get a prayer of intercession. Now, that is, this is where, where, where someone intercedes for someone. Now, the Holy Spirit also intercedes for us, okay? But this is when a person prays for someone else. When I pray for you. Like Moses prays for the Israelites in Exodus um, 32, 11 to 13, where he says, Please, God, turn your anger away 
from these people. Okay. So that is when, and it's also like Paul, where he prayed for the Philippians and the Ephesians and Colossians. And now how beautiful is this? Jesus also prayed for his disciples. Jesus prayed for his disciples. Isn't this beautiful? He prayed for his disciples. Now listen here. In John 17, verse 6. Okay? Now, we are his disciples. You and me. We are also his disciples. Okay? So, listen how beautiful this was. Where they prayed, he prayed. Jesus prayed to Father. Father, I have revealed to them. They, them I have revealed you to them. They have fastened your word firmly to their hearts. Stimoni. They have fastened your word firmly to their hearts. So he says it for God to say, Jere, die woord wat ek vir hulle gegeet het, is in hulle harte. Die woord is in hulle harte. They know everything is a gift from you. The very words you speak to me, I have passed on to them. They have received your words and carry them in your hearts. So, God, you know, Jesus went to God and he said, you know, they are carrying your words. I'm so, you know, I'm proud of my our disciples. And they know you and they know everything is a gift from you and everything. So it's almost like he 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 lifted the disciples to God. Nay, saying, They are good servants, Lord. They are good servants, Lord. With deep love, verse 9. With deep love, I pray for my disciples. Not to those of the un okay, not to those of the unbelieving world. All right. So this was he directly prayed for his disciples. Verse ten, still, still John seventeen, verse ten. For all who belong to me belong to you, and all who belong to you belong to me. Said the money. And my glory is revealed through their surrendered lives. So. Jesus told God, he said, Lord, they, my disciples, have surrendered their lives. They, your, they are carrying your words in their hearts. And please, Lord, let your glory be revealed through them, in them. Your glory. Father, I'm about to leave this world to be with you. The disciples will remain. So I ask the power of your name to protect them, to watch over them, so they will be united as one. Jesus het geweet, Jesus het geweet, dat Satan sy grootste plan is, is om ons uit mekaar uit te skeer, so dat ons nie in unity kan staan met mekaar nie. So Jesus het hier vir God gevra, let them be united as one. Protect them. So that they don't have to listen to what the enemy says. Protect them so that they always operate as one. Okay. Now this is very, very important. To operate as one. Verse 13. I pray that they experience into my joyous delight in you. That they experience joyous delight delight in you that absolute joy that only the heavenly father can give us Jesus het gebid dat sy disciples dit kan ervaar elke dag so that it is fulfilled in them and it overflows you know that delight, that joy just overflow, the amplified bible says now, now the previous verses was all in the passion translation Okay, but now the Amplified Bible says, Experience my joy made full and complete and perfect in them. So that they may experience my joy made full and complete and perfect in them. Filling their hearts with my delight. Isn't that a wonderful blessing to pray over someone? That is what Jesus wants for us today. He wants that joy to just overflow in us. That perfect joy. Unbelievers from the world will hate them. Now we get a lot of teenkant van unbelievers. 
en hulle lach vir ons, en hulle sê, ja, jy sê dit, en dit, en dat, maar dit is ok, want ons, dit is ok, because we are protected, and we covered, by the love of Christ, by the love of Christ, I'm not saying remove them from the world, because the world hates them, ok, but guard their hearts from evil, guard their hearts from evil, because we as disciples, we are most needed in the world. We are most needed in the world. So that ons die wereld se mense kan verander na goddelike mense toe, dier die krag wat Jesus vir ons gee, dier die heilige gees wat binne in ons is. Dis ook om Jesus gesê, moet hulle nie van die wereld af verweider nie, maar gee hulle die krag, beskerm hulle harte. Beskerm hulle harte. Because you know, when you, your heart gets attacked, your emotions fall. And then your third thoughts go. And then your mood go. And then you, that area in your life where you feel you just don't want to anymore. And that is dangerous. That is why Jesus said, protect their hearts. Sanctify them in the truth. Set them apart for your purpose. Make them holy with your word. And your word is truth. In the Amplified Bible, verse 17, it says all of these things. Sanctify him in the truth. Let them be set apart by carrying your word. Let them be set apart and be, be so that they can stay holy. Because your word is the truth. I've commissioned them and represent, I've commissioned them to represent me. Just as I represent you. We have to represent Jesus. We have to represent his character. We have to represent his love. We have to represent his forgiveness. Verse 19 says, Now I dedicate myself as a holy sacrifice so they will live fully dedicated to God. Be made holy by the truth. Be made holy by the truth. So that they can fully be dedicated to you. En weet jylle wat? Toe gaan Jesus verder in vers 20. We still on John 17. Verse 20, not only for my disciples, but for those who believe in the message, I pray. For enige, for ons wat glo, ons is ook disciples, ons is een, een, ons is een. En dit is wat Godse begeerte is. Verse 21 says, join together as one. See? So we're all the same. We're all joined together in one. So that they experience the glory. The world may, and so that the world may have no doubt that you have sent me and love them as much as you love me. Sydney We all have to stand together as one. And we have to operate as one. So that God's glory can be experienced in and through us. And so that the world can see. Jesus in us. And Jesus is love. Everything was worked out so perfectly. That is for my rachtig a mooi gebed. We as believers have to carry the message of the glory of God. Of the glory of God. So that was Jesus' prayer for us. That he prayed to God. How much does he not love us to pray over us, to be filled with glory, to be filled with joy so that it just can overflow and so that we can always carry the word in our hearts because the word is truth and so that we can be set apart, made holy. That is his prayer for us. 
That is his absolute desire for our lives to experience God's glory everywhere. Everywhere. Now, I'm just going to do one more type of prayer and that is a prayer of thanksgiving. Because I want to end off today with thanksgiving. Want God is so good for us. He is so good for us. Dear all the things that happen, Dear all die seer, dear all die waar jy voel jou hart word uitgerik, dier al die confusion, God is nog steeds goed. Hy is nog steeds goed. In Psalm 9 vers 1, David prayed this to God. He said, I worship you with extended hands. With extended hands. As my whole heart explodes with praise. I worship you with extended hands as my whole heart explodes with praise. Thank you, Jesus, so much, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I am exploding inside. Because I'm so grateful for you, Lord. I'm so thankful for you, Lord. I'm just standing in awe of you, Lord, in honor of you, Lord. And I praise you. You are a wonderful, miracle-working God, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I can't imagine who David formed. So with a heart and a genuine heart, he praised it. I will tell everyone everywhere about your wonderful works. I will tell everyone everywhere about your wonderful works. Dit is ons moet wees, ons moet vertel van sy wonderlijke werke. And how your marvelous miracles exceed expectations. Wow! How your marvelous miracles exceed expectations. How many times have you asked God for one thing and He gives you seven things? How many times have you asked God for this small thing and He gives you so much bigger? Because why? He exceeds our expectations because He's a working, miracle-working God. And we give thanks to Him. So today, I just want to let everyone tonight just go and pray and say that just how, how thankful you are for God. How thankful you are. And for that prayer that He prayed to God for us, for you and me. For you and me. Be blessed everyone. Have a wonderful week. In volgende week gaan ek aan with the different types of praise that we get. Have a wonderful week. Bye bye. Zoveel getuigenissen wat een kom van mensen wat genees wordt. Ik wil hee, als jij ziek is daar en je wees, stik nu al toe je handen op. Halleluja. Die kracht van God is oor die lichtgolven, is oor die satellietgolven, is oor die radiogolven. En die Heer raak jou nou aan in Jezus. Nie omdat ons goed is nie. Ons wil uit die prentje uitkom totaal en al. Maar daar is een God met boonatuurlijke kracht binnen in jou huis. Binnen in jou voertuig. Waar jy jou self mag bevind op hierdie oomlik. En hy raak jou aan hierdie groe God. Raak jou aan kankers droog op.
in die naam van die Heer. Mier, kom weer in lijn. Halleluja, vergroeisels wat in jou lichaam is, wat nie naam moet wees nie. Droog op in die naam Jesus. van die Heer. Klemens gloeie dat die Heer genees nog, nat- natuurlijk. Hy is God, Jehova Rafa. Hy is die God wat nog genees. Dit gebeur nou daar in jou, in jou huis. Daar waar jy self nou mag bevind. Ontvang die geneesende kracht van die Heer in jou lichaam op hierdie oomlikke. Oh, How great that 